Hey guys, JC the Sniper here, and today I am making a tactical video. Um, and what I mean by that is I'm going to discuss uh, tactical, essentially. Um, what is tactical, specifically as it pertains to knives. Um, because, you know, I've gotten a lot of comments uh, about different knives, uh, the applications I've suggested them for, where people are like, oh, dude, that could be a tactical knife. And I'm like, yeah, but, I mean, could I defend my life with it if I had to? Yes. Would I want to? Heck no. <laughs> you know? Um, I had one guy who told me that my uh, dive knife is a, a good survival knife. And I was like, okay, it's a, you know, it's a 410 series stainless steel blade. Probably not what I'm going to want as a survival knife. It's just not built for it. Uh, it's good rust resistance, and it's, you know, not a bad dive knife, but for something for survival that I'm going to be thumping on, you know, beating the crap out of it, that's not what I want. Um, so, you know, the same thing kind of goes with the tactical blades. Um, what makes a blade tactical, or what makes a blade suitable for defensive use, you know? Um, so I'm going to talk about that a little bit. And, you know, this is something that's constantly changing. Um, you know, in the world of knives, knives are constantly changing. I mean, you know, the Emerson opener, you know, it's been around for a while, but Spyderco pretty much made it popular when they started applying it to their knives. Um, you know, and that's a, an advancement in the world of defensive folders because it helps you get your knife open quicker. Um, you know, knives haven't always been jimped like this. That's something that people have added as, you know, guys out in the field using the knives have said, you know, I really wish there was some way to retain my thumb on this blade. And so they've added things like that. Um, and, of course, my uh, understanding and definition of what makes a good tactical blade has changed uh, even since I've been on YouTube. Um, and, you know, especially as I've gotten older, grown up, you know, had some experience with knives, never been in a knife fight, obviously, thank heavens. Um, but, you know, just in usage of the blades and such, I've gained some skill and experience that I draw from. And, you know, I can say what makes, you know, what, what would help me hold on to a knife, you know, like what makes uh, for a good grip on a knife. Uh, what's going to help me not ride forward? What allows me to make a good, uh, you know, a good slash or a good slice? Um, you know, what kind of tips are strong? What kind of tips are weak? Things like that that I've learned over the years. Um, and I know you guys have too. But I'm just going to talk a little bit about, about that. Um, you know, when I was younger and, you know, I got one of these when I was about 14 a Gerber pair frame. Actually, it wasn't this one. This Gerber pair frame right here is the one I got when I was 14. Now, when I was 14, this thing was bad. Um, you know, I thought I was going to be going to town with this thing, just like all the other 14-year-olds here on YouTube think. <laughs> no offense, guys, but, you know, it's just... You know, of course, I was smaller, younger. I thought this thing was a beast. And now as I look back on it, I'm thinking, okay, that's not a good tactical knife. You know, at the time, I thought, oh, this is this is great. If somebody attacks me, I have this. You know, now I'm looking at it and I'm going, uh, maybe not. Maybe not so much. Um, you know, solid stainless steel f handle. You know, uh, tip down only for the carry method. Uh, so I was going to have to draw this from my pocket, swivel it, pop it open. You know, not the quickest uh, deployment. Of course, the deployment once you get there is really quick. Um, but it's a thumb stud, which you guys know I don't like very much. It's easy to slip over a thumb stud if your hands are wet or bloody or, you know, anything's going on. So, you know, that's a negative. Uh, and then, you know, look at this frame it's completely smooth you know there's a little bitty excuse for a thumb ramp like back here but that's not going to stop my hand from going forward um, this choil will help but it's not excellent to be truthful um, so you know it's not horrible but this is not what I'd want to take to a knife fight 
and you know of course that you know, it just shows you know as you gain more experience and stuff you're going to learn these things you know now this knife is is a good knife and it's held up well um, I don't really have any complaints with it for EDC you know it's it's a decent blade for EDC and I liked it uh, but tactical defensive blade no two and a half three inch blade a little bit short uh, not a bad blade shape but you know just some of those other things we mentioned not the most excellent blade completely smooth you know not great for tactical use you know then I started getting some other little knives you know different stuff not for tactical purposes but you know blades like you know a box cutter now there's people that have commented on my channel say you know they they brought down the world trade center with cheap box cutters and yeah uh... you could cut the crap out of somebody with this thing you know it's got a box cutter it's sharp um, you can slice somebody with it but it's not what i'm gonna want in a tactical situation because once again this is smooth there's nothing really tractionable on it um, there's you know pretty decent finger grip here you get in that thing and cut somebody but not ideal again not a quick deploying blade it just isn't and obviously that's not what this is intended for it's a box cutter but anyway this just goes with a the theme over the over time I have uh, changed my definition of what I think is a good tactical blade um, even just since I started making videos here on YouTube uh, if you guys watch my videos you'll know in my early videos uh, this was one of my favorite knives um, for tactical purposes uh, and now it is well at the time it was my my favorite knife for tactical purposes and now it's not you know um, still a great knife I still like it but not my top choice uh, for a tactical situation now this knife does have things going for it it's a quick deployment has that auto lock system which I don't think is extremely necessary but it does help strengthen that lock a little bit um, you know has the this which flips into a finger guard um, some you know jimping a little bit of jimping on the back which is not that great honestly um, and then basically smooth Zytel with some knurling on the screw and this pivot point um, which you couldn't get a little bit of a dig on um, that does help a little bit but not a ton so you know it's uh, it's decent for for uh, tactical purposes you know it's got some some it's it's pretty good ergonomically good pretty good EDC blade um, but nowadays you know I've moved away from this because I found other blades that I think are significantly better um, you know there's blades such as the Cold Steel Voyager um, this is a better tactical blade in my opinion still has a lack of jimping on the spine but you've got more roughly tractioned uh, Zytel on the sides uh, bigger you know it's a it's a bigger blade see there you get about you know half an inch more reach on it maybe a little bit more than half an inch maybe three quarters of an inch more reach um, you know more belly which will give you more slashing ability um, and it's a lockback which is stronger uh, you guys know my a lockback is my favorite now um, so you know I think this is a, a better blade for um, for that type of thing but still you know has some issues uh, nothing really not a lot of jimping up here to stop your hand from going forward a lot of this thing expands in the back to keep you from coming back on it but it would be not too difficult to slide up onto that blade in a in a stab so you know good tactical knife maybe not the best uh... but it's a good one you know and then there's uh... you know some other knives like this one right here the uh... spyderco stretch great thumb ramp great jimping on it um, good finger choils you know this knife when you get your hand wrapped around that it is not going to move that thing locks in good. Uh, good belly, nice flat ground blade to allow you to do some nice slashing cuts. Uh, but still a strong tip with that uh, kind of wild, funky 
I guess modified drop point maybe you'd call that, I don't know, modified sheep's foot, you know, whatever it is, you get a strong point out of it and still a nice slashing uh, capability. So, you know, quick deployment and it's got the spider hole, you know, the thumb hole, which is my favorite method of deployment, as you guys should know, uh, and a lock back, which is my favorite lock. So, you know, this is an excellent tactical blade in my opinion because of those things. Um, then you've got some knives like the Resilience. Big old huge blade. Nice, nice belly. I would lay somebody open if you got them with it. Uh, full flat ground, razor sharp, you know, good point. Would do good stabbing attacks as well. Very finely textured G10, which isn't the grippiest to be honest. Um, but still has that excellent thumb ramp and jimping. Um, and a nice little finger choil here. You can really lock in on this blade too. Another excellent choice for tactical purposes. Uh, it has a liner lock, which isn't my favorite, but this is a very strong liner lock, so no huge complaints about that. Um, then we've got a knife like the Spartan, which is definitely a defensive blade. Um, huge curved kukri style blade. It's going to be essentially for chopping the crap out of someone. Uh, beastly lockback, way more than you'll ever need in any encounter defensively. Just all around excellent. You know, locks your hand in with those deep finger grooves. There's no way you're coming off that thing. Uh, quick opening with the little wave feature they've got going on there. Um, and pretty quick deployment with a thumb stud. So, not bad. You know, another decent tactical blade. So, you know, other knives, such as perhaps this OD-1, this I don't like for uh, tactical. You know, it has finely checkered G10, which is actually fairly grippy on this one. Uh, but other than that, you know, smooth on this side, nothing to grip, no real flare, um, a little bit. Would, would help, but nothing on the back spine of the blade to keep your hand from going forward. Now, we could lock in here and place this in our palm, and that would work, but not optimal for tactical purposes. You know, a uh, two and a half inch blade, something around there, which is just not that long, not a very good amount of reach. So, this is not going to be what I want. Um, and of course, the same goes for smaller blades, you know, it keeps going Kershaw Vapor, you know, this has got a little bit of jimping back here, but it's pretty radius and not that sharp. Uh, you slip over that pretty easily. Uh, liner or a frame lock, so it's a pretty strong lock, but uh, it's a thumb stud, which is, you know, a decent thumb stud, but not the best. And again, this is smooth. I mean, you could slip forward on this pretty easily. So, you know, Basically, what I'm going to look for in a tactical knife is these things we've just talked about. I'm going to look for a knife um, like this Endura, which deploys quickly, you know, comes out quickly in a variety of methods. I can use the thumb hole, you know, I can, I can spider drop it open, um, and you guys know I can whip these open pretty good. Um, you know, a lot of different methods I can use to deploy it, but it quickly deploys. Um, it has nice texturing on the FRN handles, which allows me to grip it well. It's light for its size. It offers me a lot of reach, and, you know, it has good belly, good stabbing capabilities, and it just locks my hand in good. And those are the elements that I'm looking for, you know, and it has, you know, good ergonomics. It's comfortable in hand. Those are the elements that I'm looking for in a tactical blade. And those are elements that I don't find in a lot of blades such as the Gerber Paraframe. Um, some of those are lacking in the Columbia River Knife and Tool M16, which I was so fond of at one time. Um, so I guess that's about all I'm going to say about that subject right now. So I uh, hope you guys have gotten something out of this. Thanks for watching. Uh, this is JC the Sniper, signing off.